Uh, here we are on air streaming with Kat Edmondson. Welcome. Thank you. It's really good to have you. You know, and it's funny, I uh, have been following you for a while, and I try to ask different questions that maybe you haven't been asked and do different things. You have, pro but I'll start out with saying what I'm guessing what you have to be potentially tired of. I want to get mm. your take on it. Okay. Do you like or not like being called an old soul? Have that, oh, does that, that happen constantly? Yes, but I, I take that with the highest honor. I actually feel like an old soul. So when somebody says that, I feel as though I'm being understood. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, okay, we know Kat Edmondson was on season two, American Idol. We won't even go down that road, but for Thank people's you. reference, if yeah. they want to look it up, I said, I bet it. she's sick of talking about that. But I'm curious, because your music does have such a classic um, sound to it, do people expect you to be more mature than you are? Yes. In fact, when people hear me before they see me, um, I, they say that I sound like an older woman, for better or for worse. And not just your appearance. Like, are, like you want to be just a goofy young lady. Yeah, And you're sure. expected to act in this sort of noble manner because of the tone of your singing. Yes. But then again, I enjoy um, uh, meeting their expectations. It's fun to um, uh, behave with an air of, of sophistication, <laughs> if you will. Do you feel obligated to act that way because of the way you sound? Would you just rather cut loose once in a while? That's kind of where I'm going with that. Oh, uh, well, you know, after I made my first two records, I very much felt that way. I was ready to have fun and cut loose. I was even having fantasies about starting a rock band side project. And the demos that I made for my third record um, sounded more aligned with pop rock. But um, once I made those demos, I got it out of my system and I returned to more of the sound that I'd already been making. And I think I'm pretty comfortable there. At any point as you started growing your career, and you have a very distinct voice, by the way, did you ever try to change it? Did you ever try to sound different and say, I want, I want to sound more like blank or yeah. something? Yeah. You know, when I write songs, I always hear someone else's voice in my head. And I always expect to hear them when I open my mouth. And it's often a disappointment <laughs> when Roy Oberson doesn't come out, or, um, or Joni Mitchell, or Frank Sinatra, or whoever I'm thinking of. Neil Young, it, it's not me. I have to hone in on, on myself. And sometimes the hardest person to be and represent is yourself. I'm curious, has anyone ever told you that listening to your music makes them want to smoke really long cigarettes and uh, drink martinis? They say that, yes. <laughs> I just take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. It, it almost makes you want to go back in time. Um, you know, You've referenced many times that I've seen that you visualize a movie scene when you're writing a song. I thought that was very interesting, and I'm not a songwriter, and I don't know that that's that common. I don't think I've heard anyone describe it, completely picturing a movie scene as they write a song. What's your connection to movies and that method? I assume that it's because when I first started listening to music, it was oftentimes in old movies. My mom would play um, old musicals for me as a little girl. And I started learning what ultimately uh, I came to know as the Great American Songbook, all of these great uh, standards written for film. And, uh, and so there was a combination of the visual image and the acting and the dancing and then the song itself that was unfurling. And when I write now, I. I see images, um, sometimes recollections of scenes and films that I know, and oftentimes scenes that I must be writing in my head. Um, and I can't speak to anyone else's process, whether or not other people write this way. So when it comes time to make a music video, you've already gotten it written. <laughs> it's true. I have dozens of ideas for music videos. And you mentioned your mom. I thought this would be really fun because your mother, Sue, is here. Yes. And I wanted to see if she would come and join you on yes, the couch. I, would I love thought that. it'd be really fun. 
rarely do I get to talk to an artist when one of their parents are here. Hello, Sue. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are very sweet watching you together because you kept checking on each other. Are you okay? Are you okay? Mom, are you okay? Um, what's your first recollection of her singing where you, think, you thought, wow, there's something there? Because every parent thinks their kid's special, but you really knew this is for real. Um, it wasn't her singing first. It was that she wanted to perform. And uh, she was ready to do a show. We'd have her girlfriends over for the weekend or just to spend the night. And, and I'd be cooking or something, and they'd say, okay, five minutes, we're gonna do a show. And then they'd do the show, and then they'd say, okay, okay. And I'd tell them how much I loved it. And then they'd trot around the corner and come right back and say, okay, we're gonna do another show in 30 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, it was it was tireless. They just had so many ideas. Yeah, you they know, were mostly funny. my ideas. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Exactly. I was the director. <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm curious because again, I was talking about it with the music that you write and the way she performs. People expect this very eloquent young lady, which she is. But at some point, because I have a 13 year old daughter, it had to be brutal. I'm guessing. Do you remember a time where you were just ready to throw her out the door? Well, yes. it was it was reciprocal. <laughs> <laughs> it happened when I was around 14. Yeah. Things got a little rough. The waters got rough. Um, but as you yes. can see, we made it through. You just have to hang in there. Yeah. But um, yes, I didn't realize everything she was going through. Catherine, rather than tell me everything at that point, was journaling. She'd been journaling since um, at least the fourth grade. Yeah. And it's not my job to read the journal, so I just thought she was putting her thoughts in. She was writing music, mm -hmm. um, which I didn't know until she went away, basically, to Charleston and came back to live in Austin. And she said, I'm going to be a jazz singer. I said, okay, well, catch me up with this. <laughs> um, that was new to you. That was like breaking news. Yeah. Guess I what just, cats doing. I, I just wondered how that looked, you know. But um, it was very exciting. It was frightening. But she just took every job there was to take and uh, started looking around for where she wanted to sing. Is her room back home still set up like it was the day she left? No. Because no. there might be some money on tours of the home. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we do have all of the memorabilia along the way. We do, in big clear plastic boxes, a lot of them under my bed. Yeah. It's full. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, One last thing, Sue, your favorite song of uh, your daughter's is what? I can't choose it's a like, favorite. It's oh, like picking a favorite child. You can't. Oh, no, I love, I love everything she sings and... Um, Is there anything that you just really enjoy when you're listening in the car or something, Mom? Well, each song has a memory for me. For instance, um, when I was down and, and something was bothering me last year and I got a, a call and she said, now, I don't want you to worry, you know. I'm going to send you a little snippet of something. And, and she says, she sings, sends me this song and it's, you know, I'm right behind you. And I, I, it just, you know, I burst into tears and I was so grateful. And I said, um, did you just write that for me? And she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, it's mine anyway. <laughs> Oh, Nada, thank you for coming in, Kat Edmondson, Mother Sue. It's a pleasure talking to you. Oh, both. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mom.